Good morning, day 91. So today the tax man cometh, and I'm hoping he brings me some money. That would be great. It wouldn't be very nice if he took more money, but we'll see. So I don't know how much I'm going to get done today. Um, I'm going to... <clears throat> the tax people from ARP in your community if you belong to ARP. I don't even think you need to belong to ARP. Um, they have people that prepare your taxes for free but usually you have to connect with them in January. So I had made an appointment in January with the ARP people and the place I'm having it done is near my mom's house. So after that, I'll be going to her house, and hope, hopefully she's feeling better today. So I won't be getting much done here at home, but I would like to do a couple of things, because if you watched yesterday's video, you saw what a mess I made before uh, Mom called and needed some help. So anyway, um, I'm going to enjoy my coffee time before that happens, and my coffee pot is not cooperating here with me. Some of my um, do-it-yourself coffee pods are getting kind of old and the gasket, even though I've replaced the gasket with a rubber band, it's still not behaving. So I think I may have to use a couple different ones. I have several. But I have the feeling this isn't going to be the best pot of coffee. Let me take a look. Oh, oh, yep, it exploded. So hopefully there aren't too many grounds in there. Nope, looks okay. All right, well, we'll see how this is working. So anyway, those are my plans for today. Um, you guys done your taxes hopefully you don't owe money um, the tax people said that with my income that I probably don't even need to do taxes but that makes me kind of nervous so um, I do them every year anyway even if I get it all back so for me it's a good way to have a little bit of a chunk of money at the beginning of the year. So that's what I do and I know I could probably put that money somewhere else but in all honesty uh, when you make a lower income um, you actually, well at least I do, spend more than you save but it is my goal to have um, at least an emergency fund which I sort of have. It's it's not going to set the world on fire, but, you know, uh, if I need a new roof or new windows, which I will need soon, it certainly isn't going to pay for them. But that's okay. I usually do everything on time payments, and then I get them paid off before the time is due, so that works out well for me. Um, so anyway, um, I'll be back in a little bit. And uh, we'll see what's for breakfast this morning. And I'm trying to eat up every morsel of food that I have and not waste anything. Because we can't afford all these food prices. Oh my. Breakfast, day 91. Oh, look at this mess in there. Oh, will I ever get it done? <laughs> eh, yes, I will do it. All right, let's see what's for breakfast today. All right, and here is my frittata. So I have about half of that left. I'm going to have that for breakfast because I have to kind of hurry this morning so I can get to the tax people. And I'm going to have a slice of my homemade bread. I'll have some toast with that. And... I don't know, this is still the pulp from my yogurt. I wanted to try to make something with that, but I don't know if that's a good week. I should freeze it. 
but I haven't found a recipe I want to try yet. So, And I still have enough to make one more Reuben sandwich, so I may have that later. I still have lots of grapes. But I'm trying to get to my salsa. <clears throat> and hopefully this won't come crashing down. Okay, so I'm going to put some salsa on my frittata. And I'm going to heat that up a little bit. I don't like cold salsa on hot eggs. So I'm going to have that. And let's see, what else do I have? I have to get in here and check and see. I still have some meatloaf left. I did the original recipe for that about four days ago. So I have plenty to eat for dinner. I won't be cooking anything, but I'll be putting something together. And then I think I'm going to have some of my homemade jam for my toast. <coughs> The security patrol is on duty. <laughs> oh my. All right, I need some butter. All right, that should do her. All right. I will meet you at the stove. Okay, so I still have a good chunk of my homemade bread. And that needs to be eaten pretty soon. Otherwise, it's going to be getting too old and dry and if that happens then I'll turn it into breadcrumbs no problem but I still have some marble rye and I still have some um, rolls so almost gone and that was good bread it really was so I have uh, I'm going to stick this in my toaster my toaster broke Oh, a few months back, and I never got a new one because I have a toaster oven. Although I do like the way a toaster works better, but I really don't have the room on my very cluttered kitchen countertop. But this is a working kitchen. You know, I'm in it all the time. So as much as I'd love to have a staged kitchen, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Although I am going to be working on putting up some open shelving in a couple places in the kitchen. So I can use my cart, which has all my spices and oils on it, but the whole point of it was to get the cart to have a little more counter space. So it's kind of counterproductive. No, don't quit your day job. That was a bad joke. <laughs> okay, well, anyway... I'm going to heat up my frittata and uh, there's two of them here. I'll probably only eat one so uh, with the toast and everything and then I think I'm going to have a little bit of yogurt with grapes too. So I'll be back. Oh bless you. I'll be back when I get this all put together. Okay, here we have it. Breakfast day 91. My mac and cheese frittata. I put some salsa and more cheese on top. Now if you wanted to, you could shred up a little bit of lettuce and green onion, but kind of in a hurry this morning, so I'm not going to do that. My homemade bread with my homemade chia seed freezer jam. And my homemade yogurt with a little cinnamon sugar on top. So that should be good, and it should be healthy. All right, my friends, I'm going to get about my day, and I'll be back later. Hello. All right, I'm going to use up some more of my leftovers and make another dish. So I've got the pulp left over from making my yogurt, and... I guess you can make porridge and cookies out of this, but I want to try something totally different. So in this pan, I have a small carrot and a small potato cooking. Now, you guys know that on my channel, I'm a vegetarian. And 
I cook vegan and vegetarian. But as you all know, you can substitute anything that you want to eat with what I use. So in other words, if I use vegan meats or whatever ground or whatever, you can put hamburger in there. I mean, you know, if, if you're a carnivore, that's what you can eat. So you can make the recipes that I make and just substitute whatever meat or vegetable or whatever that you want. So I, this is an experiment. This could be really terrible. I don't know. But I just have fun with it. And otherwise this would just go in the garbage anyway and I might be out a, a carrot and a potato. But I want to make some cheese sauce, a vegetarian cheese sauce. And even people that do eat dairy if you're trying to get away from dairy or you're, you can't tolerate dairy, uh, you might want to give this a try. So uh, I'm going to go into my fridge and see what else I could add to this to make it like a cheese-like sauce. It's not going to taste exactly like cheese, but in a pinch, an oatmeal is extremely healthy. So in a pinch, maybe you could use this as a cheese sauce. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so these are the seasonings I'm going to make this with. So I have two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. I have half a teaspoon of turmeric, half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, or paprika, whichever you have, and half a teaspoon of ground mustard. And I have a tablespoon of sun-dried tomatoes here. Um, and I think my potato and carrot is done. And you want to cook them till they're soft because we're going to blend these up. And I did salt the water because cheese is salty, right? So um, I'm going to drain some of this water off. I don't need it all. You can always save the water, freeze it, and put it in a soup stock instead of putting it down the sink. And then I'm going to add some milk to this, some soy milk. Put whatever milk you have, almond, cow, whatever. And then I'm going to add my oat, uh, whatever, pulp. All right, um, let me get the milk, drain this a little bit, and I'll be back. All right, here I retained a little bit of the cooking water in case I needed to, to thin things out. All right, I'm going to start out with about a quarter of a cup or so of my plant-based milk here. And I'm going to keep that to the side too in case I need more of that. And I'm going to add my oat pulp. I've had this in the refrigerator, and I hope I didn't add too much liquid, but we'll see. And the reason I thought this might make a good faux cheese sauce is because it's so goopy, and cheese is goopy, right? So I'm going to go ahead and try and stir this up without getting too much in the way of lumps. And I'm going to add my sun-dried tomatoes in there as well because they're really dry. Those have been in the pantry for a while. So I will be back in a couple minutes after I get this all cooked up. And I may need to add some something else to this. I don't know. Like I said, I am winging this. 
All right, another thing I'm going to add to this liquid, this is just olive juice that I've saved from different olives, and it's acidic. So I'm going to add one tablespoon. I may need another one, but I just want that tangy taste that you get with cheese. And if, if I'm right, as I cook this, with the oats it should thicken up because that was just from making oat milk and the pulp has not been cooked and it does look like it's starting to thicken up and before it gets too thick I'm going to go ahead and add all my seasonings now, nutritional yeast, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's a very cheesy tasting um, yeast. It's, it's not a yeast like a bread yeast. It's, um, it's not that kind of a yeast. But anyway, it's very high in vitamins, and uh, like vitamin B, and it's uh, got a very cheesy taste. So this is thickening up, and if you want <clears throat> a nacho cheese, you could add some Tony Sacheries, or you could add some Franks, or some jalapenos, whatever you like. And it is thickening up, and it'll get thicker once I blitz it up. We're going to blitz this up in the... Uh, little mini blender and hopefully it'll be good and then I'm going to use my um, meatloaf and put a little tiny bit of taco seasoning on now this stuff is really salty from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to make it a uh, taco meat that meatloaf is really stretching this will be meal number Four, I think, that I got from that little 12 ounces of uh, Impossible. So I want to make some nachos, and I'm going to use that, and I want to use the, the cheese sauce here. So I'm going to give this a little taste and see what else it needs. All right, I'm going to add one more tablespoon of the olive juice. You can add as much as you like. Needs a little bit more of a tangy taste. So, this is not going to taste exactly like cheese, okay? But that doesn't mean you can't make something tasty that you enjoy eating. Um, so why not, right? Okay, I'm going to let this cool off. It's thickened nicely. And I'm going to turn this off now. And this will get thicker as it cools off. And then when it's a little bit cooler, I'm going to give it a little blitz. Alright, I'll be back in a little bit. Alright, I tasted this. I like it. It's good. Um... Like I said, it's not going to taste exactly like cheese. I'll call it a cheesy sauce. But I, I've decided, now I don't like hot. I like spicy, well-seasoned things, but not hot. But I decided to add a, just a little bit of Tony Sacheries, just for a little bit of a kick, because it is going to be a, a cheesy, nacho cheesy sauce. But, um, like I said, I don't like it too, too much heat. All right, I'm going to let this cool off. Okay, I have this much meatloaf left. So I'm going to... Um, Cut this up a little bit. Now, another thing that you can make out of this 
if you cut it like in squares, like a, like a square meatball, I'll show you what I mean. Like this, you can make a meatball sub out of it. Just put some uh, pasta sauce over it and some mozzarella cheese on a roll. That would be delicious. But I'm going to chop mine up a little bit before I chop up my cheese sauce because I just want to make a little bit of um, little meat in my nachos. So I'm going to chop that up. And that was one of the reasons why I did not over season this meatloaf. If you want to see how I made the meatloaf back up about four days maybe ago, I really should start putting on there what I'm making. But, um, so I'm just going to roughly chop this in, in my little, whatever brand this is. I don't want to turn it into a paste. So, all right, I'm going to chop that up and I'll be back. Well, I saved three little squares of the meatloaf. I'm going to freeze these and next week I'll make a meatball sub out of them. I don't want to leave it in the refrigerator that long, so I'm just going to freeze this. But, um,. I'm going to add a little bit of this taco seasoning to the meat. And this is impossible meat. Oh, not too much. Like I said, it's salty. And then if you still, if you want a little bit more heat, then just add a little Franks or something different. So uh, I'm going to finish this up. And then the cheese sauce is going in. Okay, there is my <clears throat> my meat, and you can add as <coughs> much seasoning as you like. Okay, this is pretty thick already. I'm going to add just a splash of soy milk just for blending it. We'll see if that does the trick. And then I should be able to put everything together and have some make some dinner. All right, the cheese sauce is ready. It's nice and smooth. It's not the prettiest cheese sauce, but it really has a good taste. Um, you know, it's not like a bright yellow or anything, but that's okay. We go for taste. At least I do. So there is the sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and put together my nachos now. All right, I am not going to cut up a tomato today. I still have salsa I want to use up. And before I heat up my impossible crumbles here. I'm going to add the salsa to the crumbles. And that way the salsa will be warmed up too. And then I love these on the border cafe style um, Tortilla chips, they are really, really good. We get these at our local marks here, but these are my favorite. And this is uh, cafe style. And they're really good. And their ingredients aren't horrible. Corn, vegetable oil. Um, has different oils, canola, corn, cotton seed, safflower, and soybean oil and sea salt. So that's basically it. Corn, sea salt, and oil. But they're really, really tasty. All right, I'm going to heat this up and put this together. All right, meat's all warmed up. 
and everything in here is going to be warmed up already. So you don't really even have to put it in the oven unless you want uh, because the cheese is already melted. It's a cheese-like sauce. So, all right, put as much on as you want. And I like to do the salsa with the meat. That way you get a good bite of all the flavors. All right, now I don't have beans, but I do have hummus. So I'm going to add a little bit of hummus here and there. Just to give it some beany flavor. And this is a hummus I've had from Costco. I like these little individual servings. Because um, then you don't feel like once you open a, a, a container that you have to eat the whole thing. So I'm going to add a little bit of that. So, you know, if you don't have one ingredient, you can use something similar. All right. Then I'm going to put my cheesy sauce on. And I, like I said, I know it's not the prettiest. It's kind of brownish. But that's okay. It's uh, probably from the sun-dried tomatoes that I put in there. And also the, um, the pulp has a little bit of a gray-brown hue to it. So, all right, that's looking good. And then I'm going to going to add a little bit more salsa just for some color. And I think this will be tasty. Even if we do have a brown cheesy sauce. And put some lettuce on there. more salsa and lots of green onions and my green onions are starting to look a little anemic like I said if you grow them on the windowsill just in water that's going to happen all right so there we have it dinner day 91 and uh, let's give it a taste. Now when you're making your cheesy sauce and you're putting your olive uh, juice in there, be mindful of the amount of salt that some of your other seasonings have. Like if you add the Tony Sacheries, that has salt. Um, anything other than you add, so uh, you might want to taste it. I ended up putting three tablespoons of the olive juice in there and uh, the Tony Sacheries. So, and it's good to my liking, but I don't want anybody to think it's too salty. All right, let's give this a taste. I don't know. We'll see. Looks good. Mm hmm I think it's tasty. So easy peasy nachos with a cheesy sauce in case you run out of cheesy sauce. When you have some potatoes and carrots laying around that you want to get rid of, give it a try. All right, my friends, I'm going to eat my dinner. 
Well, I'll be I back I almost later. forgot. Today is Tea Tuesday. How about that? It's Tea Tuesday. Say hello to the ladies. To all the tea ladies. All right, so with the recipe for the cheesy sauce, I'm going to try and remember to call it cheesy because it's not really cheese. It's vegetables. But you can make cheese out of vegetables, but you, you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm having water. I don't drink enough water. I'm one of those strange people. I don't like the taste of water, so I usually make it into tea. But since I had to go visit the tax man today, I, I made it before I left, but it's still not cold. So I'll probably have a cup of tea in a little while. But I wanted to say with the cheesy recipe sauce. If you don't like olives, which some people hate them, some people love them, I love olives, you can also use lemon juice. That works just as well too. But don't add the lemon juice to your milk before you get everything else together because it'll curdle. It'll, it'll make um, like cheese curds. So, um, yeah, if you don't have cheese, I mean, it's a good substitute for cheese. And I thought it was really tasty. So, I think next week, I'm going to try and get, I, I've got little bits and pieces of this and that in my freezer. Um, things that were left over that I knew I wasn't going to eat, so... Like now I had just a little tiny bit of the um, impossible taco meat that I froze. So I'd like to get some of that out of there. I have a, a squash soup. I have, um, I'm not sure exactly what all I have. But anyway, I think next week I want to clear all those up because I don't, I'm not at the point yet where I want to start filling up my freezer, I'm still working on cooking it down. So it, it'll be counterproductive if I just keep putting things in there. But I don't want to waste the little scraps of food because you can still eat it. It's still food. And you, if it's just a little tiny bit, you can combine it with something else and make something new. So that's a really good way to save money on food, is use up every bit of it. Because, uh, I don't know, it's getting kind of kind of bare out there from what I hear. Now, when, I've, when I went to the store to do my produce haul, the stores I went to had plenty. There, there weren't a whole lot of bare shelves all over the store. There was some you know, some bare shelves, but uh, there's still food out there, so no need to panic. And you won't panic. If, if you build yourself a stash, you know, every week, buy yourself a few extra goodies and put them on the shelf, then there's no need to panic. So, because you'll be all right. And keep in mind your family members, you know, if you can't talk them into doing the same, then just store a little extra for them, and they'll be very grateful if you do. So somebody was asking me about these lanterns, and I didn't read the directions yet, because I didn't put the batteries in. They were asking me if you can charge your cell phone with these, and yes. But I'm not sure if you can charge this without using batteries. I really need to read the directions, but yes, you can charge your cell phone on here. So, um, and another thing I've been doing, hang on, I've been reading my garden book, and this is uh, Indoor Edible Garden. I talked about this a long time ago. I, I got this, I think, last year, and it tells you what windows you can plant what vegetable plants in and how to set it up. It's a really, really nice book. 
I'm, I'm not selling this or affiliated. I just like to share the information. And it's got a lot of really nice pictures. And in the front it has a... Um, it has diagrams of different places in your house, the different zones. So it's really a nice book. And it's by Zia Alloway. And it was $22.99 and $29.99 in Canada. I don't remember if I paid that or if it was on sale when I got it. Knowing me, it was probably on sale when I got it. But it's a really, really nice book that is very useful if you want to do a little bit of gardening and you don't have a whole lot of space. So, um, I've been watching a lot of garden videos because everybody has a little bit different, um, some different ideas to contribute. They do, they share their successes and, and, and failures. But I was watching uh, a young man today and it's DIY mm, I can't remember I'll have to put it here somewhere the name of it but this young man gardens on um, a rooftop and it's I'm not sure where he lives um, it's it, it could be in Japan or it could be in the Philippines I don't know but anyway, it always amazes me, even with a lot of the um, uh, the people from India that do a lot of gardening, it always amazes me what their soil looks like that they plant all these things in. It just looks like garden soil, you know, like something you dig out of your yard. But they have incredible success, I, and I know they add other things to it, but it always looks kind of dry and crumbly. Here are, you know, the potting soil we get is rich and dark, and, you know, it, it's just a different, a different, totally different kind of gardening. But apparently it's very successful. So, um... Uh, but his channel was really nice. I think he started it four months ago, and he already has 77,000 subscribers. So I'm kind of binge-watching what he's done. His videos aren't incredibly long, like mine are getting to be. But um, yeah, it's really interesting. And like I said, if I remember, I will um, either put his channel in the description. And I can't put a link because I film on my phone and I edit on my phone now and I haven't figured out how to do that on the phone. On the computer I know how to do it but I'll have to figure that out. So anyway I hope you guys had a good Tea Tuesday. Uh, the tax man was very nice to me. He uh, He's giving me some money back. So basically, whatever I pay out in taxes, I get back. But it always makes me nervous not to pay anything in taxes. But that's one of the perks of not having a lot of money. Um, you almost always get a refund. So that's a good thing. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. Um, I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.